on week three of Community Conversations. Um, having a lot of fun doing this. So again, thanks Liz for, for doing this. Um, first of all, I'm gonna act like a total newbie. What is Emeritus and what is your role there? Sure, no problem. That's a great question because a lot of people have heard of the company, but they don't know what we do or what we sell or how we help people. Um, Emeritus is a 130 year old company. It's the formerly known as Bankers Life Insurance. We, our headquarters, um, our national headquarters is based here in Lincoln at 59th and O Street. And we, we are an insurance, employee benefits and financial services company. Uh, my role is I lead communications and community relations at Emeritus. Nice. So Emeritus is such a fantastic supporter of our community uh, well-being in so many ways. So can you tell us about your um, positive impact prior to COVID-19? Sure, yeah. So serving our communities with purpose is one of our core values at Emeritus. And so that comes from the top down. It's part of our DNA as associates at Emeritus. Um, one of the things that actually drew me to um, applying at that company is that we offer eight hours of volunteer time a month. Um, so, and that's paid time. So uh, associates uh, can volunteer for causes they care about eight hours a month um, on the company's dime. And we look at that as a way for us to really make our community well-being stronger, as well as it um, gives our associates that balance in their life where they can work, play, volunteer, and have kind of that well-rounded life. So we um, like to focus in, I would say our top priority is education, uh, particularly higher education is where we focus our philanthropy on. Um, but we also do a lot uh, to make our communities where our offices are located stronger. Um, so you might see grants to things like the Children's Zoo or the Children's Museum, those institutional things that make quality of life better in the cities that we are a part of. Um, we also have community involvement councils at our offices. So those are made up of associates who come together and plan volunteer opportunities for our associates or food drives or clothing drives. We work with a lot of our nonprofit partners to, to execute on those. So it's, it's a great place to work uh, because community is such a priority and um, I happen to be in a role where I get to, to see the impact that our, our company can make as well as our volunteers um, with different nonprofit partners across the city. Wow, that's so cool. I had no idea about um, the eight hours of volunteer um, time for your employees too. That's, that's really awesome. Um, so when COVID-19 became a threat and you know things shifted so drastically, how did Emeritus step up to assist the community? Well, that's a great question. I would say um, for COVID, uh, we have a team of people at Emeritus made up of people from all different departments. So um, risk management, I mean, we're an insurance company, that's part of who we are. So we have people from legal, um, risk management, um, human resources, marketing, the business lines, watching what was happening with COVID since the beginning of this year, and developing plans and strategies of how we were, would not only take care of our associates, but take care of our customers, our field colleagues, and then ultimately our community. So within um, about two weeks, we were able to move all of our associates from um, offices to remote work, which I know a lot of businesses have done uh, since this broke out. But we were pretty, it was a pretty amazing feat. Um, I can't, gotta give a lot of credit to our um, leadership team as well as our IT department of moving that many people that fast with really no interruptions to our, our customers. Because keeping our associates safe was our, our top priority. Um, as I mentioned, our associates are, have it in their, their, fi their DNA fiber of that they wanna give back to their communities. So my team was kind of inundated with all of these ideas of what we could do as a company to give back during COVID. And so several of my team members um, got together and started you know, sorting through all those ideas and looking at what we could do. And the first thing that popped up was Lincoln Public Schools needed to get Chromebooks home to kids. So uh, about three of my associates got on that right away. We were able to get uh, 1,200 Emeritus branded bags over to LPS that afternoon. And that was just a, a fun way to kind of change the dynamic because there was a lot of stress and anxiety with the virus and a lot of uncertainty. So starting to focus on other people gave my team members a lot, a lot of energy to, to start to do some good. Beyond that, um, 
we knew that the Lincoln Community Foundation was going to be setting up a fund. And that was something that we knew that we could add dollars to, to help make an impact for nonprofits that are really on the front lines of taking care of people. So we became a lead donor for the Lincoln Community um, Foundation's COVID-19 fund, response fund. And um, our former CEO, Joanne Martin, is actually serving on that grant committee. And in talking with the foundation um, this morning, they've already awarded out $517,000 worth of grants from that fund to 36 nonprofits across the city, which is pretty amazing knowing that that's really only been in action for three weeks. So anybody who's given out money to different nonprofits knows that there's a lot of work and um, uh, looking at different applications, making sure that the money's going to the right areas to make the biggest impact. So that's pretty amazing that that group has done that work so fast. And I would put in a plug for them that they are still collecting donations uh, from individuals as well as companies for that COVID fund at L, um, at Lincoln Community Foundation. I think their website is lcf.org. So maybe check that out. I'm going to more, more examples too. I don't want to ah, keep talking. No, about keep it. going. Love it. Um, you know, I talked about our associates, our facilities team. We had a couple of janitorial staff members make us aware of the fact that they had in storage over 1,800 um, E95, I think is the right term, masks, um, because they had ordered them over the years to, um, as they cleaned certain parts of the building, they need to have masks for their own safety. They did save a few masks because we need to keep our employees safe but that we were able to give out 1,800 masks to four medical facilities here in Lincoln, Tabitha, um, Madonna, as well as um, CHI, uh, St. Elizabeth's and Bryan Hospital. So that was a way our facilities department helped. And then our foundation gave a grant to Heartland Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, for the work that they're doing to virtually connect and engage with kids during this tough time, as well as uh, the Lincoln Community Action Program um, they're doing a lot of emergency services, food, formula, diapers for their Head Start families. And so that was something too that we uh, gave a grant to to help, help them in that transition from taking care of kids and educating kids and feeding kids to having to transition that work into the, the homes of those individuals from Head Start. And then we have two other initiatives that came out of those community inv um, involvement council members. Um, they, they talked within their own teams and what really surfaced is they wanted to do something with elementary kids, knowing that digital learning may be a little bit tougher for elementary kids. And then they wanted to do something for senior citizens. So they brought those ideas forward and uh, my community team, um, as well as some of the marketing members um, came together and they developed two programs. One is called Grab and Go Books and they have um, bags of uh, educational materials based on grade level toothbrushes and toothpaste because we are a dental insurance company and then hand sanitizer because we do have a lot of um, the capability of ordering a lot of that from our different vendors that we have as a corporation and so we have about 3,000 of those bags coming to Lincoln next week in, in Cincinnati Ohio as well in Wayne Nebraska and we're currently looking for ways to get that distributed um, we've had a, a couple snags because food is the priority when we took a look at distribution centers but we also want to get educational materials into these kids' hands. The second program that our team came up with is called You're Not Alone, and that's focused on um, trying to help our senior citizens who are feeling isolated during this time. Um, not only are they kind of confined to their rooms at retirement centers and nursing homes uh, for their own safety, they also have the anxiety of being classified as a sector of society that's most at risk. And so the team has put together um, on our website a form that people can fill out really simply. Um, so if you go to our website and go to our newsroom under You're Not Alone, you can enter in your name, just your first name, and a, a little note. I've seen examples come through where people put in a poem, a prayer, a note of encouragement, and we are collecting all of these digital notes and we'll be sending them to um, senior centers across Nebraska, Ohio, a couple of our other lo uh, larger locations, um, as well as sending some activity books um, from Barnes & Noble. They've been a great partner to us, both with the Grab & Go Books for School, as well as our You're Not Alone campaign, but just a great business partner to work with is Barnes & Noble. So that campaign is uh, on a soft launch right now. You've seen a we've seen a little bit in social and on our website, but we have some more 
uh, fun coming up with that um, program next week. And our partner on that uh, locally is Tabitha. They've been a great partner to us. And so we, we feel really lucky that they're helping us um, execute on You're Not Alone. So there's just some examples. And we have associates making masks and um, not only 3D masks, but sewing masks. And it's been really inspirational to see just people using their creativity and innovation on how they can help the community. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. All of it. I, we're just so lucky to have um, such community minded businesses here in Lincoln. I, I think we're so lucky in Lincoln. Um, I'm going to ask you, so you sound busy. So when I initially contacted you about being a guest on here around like mid March, um, you were so willing to be a part of this. And so thank you again. And I know you mentioned you were working 14 hour days. Um, so you're hoping to put this off later in April. Has that changed at all? Yeah, it has. I mean, as you can imagine, I mean, there's a lot of business leaders on this uh, call today, you know, adapting quickly and working uh, with different teams, um, trying to get our, make sure our associates are safe, get everybody home. Um, my role as a, as a lead for communications is really pulling my team together and coming up with a strategy of how are we going to talk about um, what we're going to do as a company to our associates, our field colleagues, uh, the media. So there was just a lot of work to do um, in the early days. And, um, you know, some people might not think that sounds fun. I, in a twisted way, communications people find crisis communication sort of fun and challenging. So it's exhausting, but it gives you a lot of energy and you feel like you're making a big impact. Um, for the business and for your and for your associates. So, um, you know, my team is great. I got to give them a shout out. They they embrace technology. I don't know what we would do without Microsoft Teams. I mean, that's just been a great addition to our um, technology over the last year. And so we worked hard to um, do what we needed to do to get the job done and long hours for sure. I was so grateful to my husband, Justin, and my kids. They were, they knew that mom had to do this for the company. And, um, you know, it, we, it went smoothly and things have leveled out a little bit. I hate to say it's normal because it's not normal, but it's a little bit more routine now. And, um, you know, I can step away from my dining room from time to time. At first, I was calling my dining room, um, you know, communications command central because I had to bring home all my computer screens and everything. So out with the pretty decor and three computer monitors now sit on my dining room table, but that's our reality. And I know everybody on this call is going through similar situations. Wow. wow. So um, how many, this is a question from Kim Haichia. How many people work for Emeritus in Lincoln? I think in Lincoln, we have around 900. We have two campuses actually in Lincoln. The one on O Street I mentioned previously, but there's several buildings on that property um, just, just uh, west of Gateway Mall. And then we also have a Fallbrook campus, and there's two buildings out that direction. Uh, Fallbrook has most of our dental vision, hearing, um, insurance, as well as we have a new product that we uh, launched a couple of years ago in partnership with Nelnet. It's called Benefit Ed, and it's, a, it's an employee benefit um, that companies can purchase and buy and, and, and put into their benefits package for associates. It helps pay down student loan debt. Um, so that similarly how your company might contribute to your 401k with benefit ed, your company can contribute to your student loan debt. So that, that all those teams are all at Fallbrook where at our home office, we have our um, enterprise shared services like our legal department, marketing, um, HR, as well as our retirement plans division, um, our broker dealer, um, and then our individual line of business, which is life insurance, disability insurance, Good question. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> um, so that, this is also about working from home and parenting <laughs> kids that are that are um, experiencing school virtually. So tell me about um, you and Justin's experience working from home. And I know you have three kids. And what is this experience like for you? Well, it's, we, we like being together. I will say if I have to be trapped with somebody, I'm glad it's the Carlson crew because, um, I mean, our family is really important to us. And before this started, um, we were kind of stressed about the lack of family time, what we felt like we had. Um, 
with three kids all in school, all in basketball. And we were just coming off basketball season. So there was just a lot of time in gyms <laughs> in February and, 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 and January. Um, but it was fun and we, we enjoyed all that stuff that we just felt like we needed to slow down. We didn't expect this big of a slowdown. Um, that, that's been nice to be together. It's definitely not lonely. There's five extroverts living under one roof, so it's loud. Um, everyone knows I'm on this call right now, so they're trying really hard to be good. <laughs> um, but I kind of, like I mentioned, I sort of took over the dining room because there was a sense of urgency with my role and wanting to make sure that I could really kind of have a mission control center here. And Justin has his office set up um, upstairs in our spare bedroom. And so he's upstairs, I'm in the dining room. The kids, kind of, they kind of study in the kitchen as well as in the um, sunroom. And I guess one of the perks of having an old house is that it's not an open space concept. I can shut the doors to the dining room. They can shut the doors to the kitchen. So that kind of helps a little bit too, but it's, it's still busy. It's just a different kind of busy. Yeah. Do you have any um, advice or well wishes for, for the parent, for parents at home that are trying to manage, manage both? I think you just have to be really kind to yourself that you're, we're doing the best we can. Um, I think for, for me, I, I got to give my kids a lot of credit that they, um, you know, Justin, uh, kind of during that chaotic time, sat down with each of them when I was working, you know, getting the Meredith kind of set up, he sat down with each kid and kind of went through like, this is going to be different and it's going to be hard and it's going to be challenged, but here's what your routine is going to need to look like. You're maybe going to get up at, in the morning and log in and check your Google classroom and start working on that before we play outside or you know, turn on the TV and that kind of thing. And, and they've taken that to heart that this is kind of the new reality. So I got to give, give them credit. But for parents, it's just, um, you know, make sure you be kind to yourself, communicate together, work together. Um, there is a, when you have more than one kid and you have lots of different teachers emailing you, it's a challenge. Um, and as your kids get older, you don't know all the teachers' names like you do in elementary school. So it's like, oh, which teacher is this again? And um, just communicating with your kids. Um, but I, I feel like Lincoln Public Schools is doing a great job. They are uh, testing things out and learning as they go. And so we got to be forgiving and give them some grace too. And every week it seems to be more organized. Um, they've implemented some checklists that are really helpful to parents. So um, I know they've been open to that feedback. And um, one of the community groups I serve on is an advisory council to Dr. Joel and his staff. And we had that Zoom meeting, might have been last week. It's hard to know because the days kind of run together. But we, we as parents kind of gave a lot of feedback around, you know, needing checklists, keeping things simple, try to consolidate as much communication in one email as possible because parents are kind of going through different emails looking for Zoom addresses or assignments. And they've taken all that to heart because they want to serve it up as easily as possible possible for, for parents because they know it's hard. You're on conference calls for the day. Your doorbell might ring with an Amazon package and your dog's barking and your kid is on a Zoom. So it's, it's definitely a challenge, that's for sure, but people are doing the best they can. Um, this is from Dr. <laughs> Randall Bretz. Um, what have you heard from across the company about your coworkers juggling work, school, and, and family activities? Yeah, I think that's a great um, question because it varies on the, the type of role people have. Um, you know, some of our associates are in a call center environment. And so, you know, they're on the, they're on the phone with customers talking about, um, you know, a life insurance, you know, claim or a DI claim, um, a disability insurance claim. Um, so that would be, I think, really challenging to do that work with kids in the background. But um, again, we're stressing to them that we understand that it's, it's, it's just the nature of how everybody's life is right now. So um, there's times where I'm leading a, a, a Zoom meeting with my own team and my seven-year-old son comes in and sits on my lap because he needs to have some love and hugs from mom and people just are okay with that. I mean, it's just kind of the way life is now. Um, I would say, you know, I think it's been more important than ever for leaders. And I say that for this group because I know everybody here has um, you know, been part of Leadership LinkedIn or a leader in their own company or in their family or community. It's really important for leaders to be checking in on associates right now, um, not only in a team environment, you know, making team meetings fun and engaging and trying to use as much video as possible, but 
one-on-one -on -one check-ins are really important. Um, you know, some people are living alone, you know, whether they're, you know, a widow or never been married, um, and they're, maybe they're keeping to themselves because they don't want to go out in the community or check in with their family because they don't want to, you know, possibly get sick or make somebody else sick. So they're, they're alone. And we got to make sure that we're checking in on those folks, as well as some of our younger associates, you know, they graduated from college and they moved in to Lincoln or they decided to stay in Lincoln and they're living in an apartment by themselves. So I think it's important that we as leaders keep checking in on those folks and making sure that they know that we can do a Teams chat anytime or FaceTime or try to set up even just a coffee. You know, it doesn't have to be about work. It can just be about talking and seeing and seeing how life is. That's great advice. Absolutely. Um, so I don't have kids, but I've been thinking about all the parents out there that are struggling. Um, uh, like, you know, all of my neighbors I'm watching, you know, they just look tired. So uh, how can I support those families, those parents that are working from home and, and have kids going to school? How can I support them while also social distancing? That's a great question. Um, hmm. I guess, you know, one of the things that I think is a little challenging, and we've gotten better at it, is uh, lunch time, I think, is hard for kids. Um, there was a few days where my seven-year-old would say, it's two o'clock and no one has made me lunch yet. You know, like, oh, sorry, I thought your sister did. Or I thought your dad did. Um, so sometimes I think some meal prep is always, always a blessing. I mean, people always um, want to make, you know, eating and food as easy as possible. Um, I feel like a little bit, sometimes we're eating too much on this quarantine. Um, I have two little bakers in my house. Both my daughters have been making a lot of food. So I know Justin and I are feeling like we've had a lot of um, treats at our house lately, but um, some of the meals time is hard. I mean, last night, some, we feel like our hours are sort of off. You know, you get up, you start working, all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's 5.30. I better do some chores. And then all of a sudden it's eight o'clock and you're like, we haven't made dinner yet. Like, so I think that's maybe a way for people to help is just with food. That's a great idea. Okay. Love that. Um, so this is my last question, but um, people that are watching, please feel free to add your questions in the chat or um, unmute at some point and ask a question too. But what do you think are ways Lincoln can still step up safely from home um, like Emeritus has uh, to make sure that our fellow community members and peers are taken care of? Well, I, I mentioned the Lincoln Community Responses um, or Lincoln Community Foundation's COVID Response Fund. I think that's a great way to, um, you know, make an impact with the nonprofits that are serving a lot of our um, most at-risk individuals. I've been on a lot of calls. Um, I, you know, as I, I as the administrator of the Emeritus Charitable Foundation, I serve on a, a usually it's like maybe three times a year. All the different foundations come together to talk in Lincoln. We're meeting weekly right now just to stay connected as funders in Lincoln. And, you know, we're really concerned about uh, people that have maybe never had, never been unemployed or are new to this whole process. And so I think donating money to organizations that can help people understand how to get through the systems, how to take care of themselves and their families. Maybe they've never had to, you know, go to the food bank. I think it's important that we continue to, to fund um, nonprofits that are doing that work. I think the mayor has done a great job of trying to share different ways to uh, connect in the city, whether it's with senior centers like, um, or checking on your fellow neighbors or they're checking in to see if people need groceries. I can't remember the site that she recently launched this week. I thought that was a great step. Um, I'll put a plug in for my husband. He's working on a project right now too where um, people can make donations to Innovation Campus through the University Foundation because they, they are mass producing hand sanitizer right now, which is so cool that, you know, the university is working on helping donate, uh, they, they, they then in turn donate hand sanitizer all across um, the country, I think. So that's a great way to make a difference. Um, but I think, you know, if you sit around and, and just think in your own circles, who are some people that you should reach out to? Not just by text, but like by FaceTime. Or um, have a cup of coffee with them in the morning or you know, have a Zoom happy hour, but just bringing people together 
is important. Be, even if they're introverts, my internet, introvert friends say they need a little bit of this too. At first, this was nice, a nice pause, but now they need some, they need some interaction too, because as human beings, we have to connect with each other and feel like we're part of a community. So it's really important that we start to build that sense of community with each other in this digital space for now. Love it. This is a question from David Williams. How do you think Lincoln small businesses are staying afloat and do you see these small businesses making it through? That's a great question. Um, I think that the Lincoln community has tried to really rally around restaurants and, and uh, I've seen a lot of people posting food that they're ordering um, to go or even beer that they've ordered from different local breweries. Um, one of the things that I think really stood out to me was the Washington Post article that many of you may have already read about Union Bank, one of our other premier uh, Lincoln brands and Lincoln companies being number two in the country for loans for small businesses. So I'm very hopeful that that will help, um, you know, with the CARES Act and all, the, all of that work that they did to help Lincoln small businesses. I do think it's going to be tough. I keep hearing, um, you know, as I I'm on that team at Emeritus that looks at uh, the virus on a daily basis and studies what's happening is that the date keeps getting pushed back of when people will go back to work or should stop um, or you know social distancing is going to be around longer than I think some of us realize so I think we're going to just have to continue to challenge small businesses to get creative I noticed even a friend of mine um, who owns a liquor store, develops some sort of app that they'll deliver to your house now. I mean, people are having to think creatively and outside the box to um, get their businesses to survive through this, but we can continue to buy gift cards or take out food or, um, I saw some of the, somebody the other day said they checked in with their nail salon lady and, you know, went, went through Venmo to, to pay her um, just to keep some sort of income coming in for those folks. Great advice. Well, thank you, Liz. We're at our time, unless there's any other questions that pop up. Um, thank you again for being here, and thank you for your, all of the work that you and Emeritus um, have done in the community. We're, we're very lucky here in Lincoln to have such support from leaders like you, so thank you again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun, and it's great to see some faces outside of work on a Zoom call. Thank you.